Hey, thanks for clicking on my video. Appreciate it. Uh, if you've seen my channel, you'll see it's my number two video. Uh, I figured this time around, instead of just doing videos purely based on gear, sounds, recordings, whatever, I also wanted to do some more informative videos uh, to talk about subjects or whatever that people might find interesting. In this case, uh, as the title of the video portrays, it's about modes and scales and an interesting way to learn them. Uh, I've been taking some guitar lessons for the last year, and all the teachers I've had, when I explain to them the theory I have or the way I visualize scales on the guitar, they have told me that this is the first time they've ever come across anybody that has thought of it or put it together this way. And it got me thinking maybe that could be some interesting knowledge to share and somebody might get some use out of it, so why not share it? So without further ado, let's talk about an easy way to learn modes and scales on the guitar. Now before we can get on to talking about how things relate to the guitar, we going to talk about this. No, no, <laughs> sorry, it's not what it, yeah, I'm talking about the thing you play with, it's under, yeah. Yeah, all right, here, let's just get that, yeah, right there, okay, perfect. Okay, so. Uh, I know this is kryptonite to a guitarist. I apologize. I know half of you have probably fled in fear right now, but for the two of you that did remain, uh, I hope you'll get some out of it. But I have to show you some basic theory on this so that we can understand where the origins of what I'm talking about comes from. And then once you can see the relationship, that's what made it click for me in my brain how this I was able to get this method to work. So again, simplistic terms, not a lot of not no major theory here. This is going to be in layman's terms, so. Just bear with me and you'll get it. Not to mention, who doesn't want to like, you know, learn a little bit more about music, you know? What? Anyways, so all we're talking about is the roots of Western music or the piano, if you will. Uh, so all we're talking about is just this. C to C, 13 tones. Technically it's 12 tones because this is obviously the octave, but that's it. That's all we're talking about. Anything beyond this is the same notes over and over again, just playing different octaves of it. But it's the exact same note, just higher or lower. In terms of like when you want to learn your scale, it's the same freaking note. It's still a C, it's just an octave higher. It doesn't matter, like, it doesn't matter if this is C1, C2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 12, 20, 24. I'm a video game developer as well, sorry, that's my nerdness. Um, it doesn't matter which C this is, don't give a crap. Now the easiest way, by the way, if you ever need to, if you want to find it on a piano, as you can tell by looking at the patterns uh, of the, the black keys and the relationships of the white keys. See how there's two and then three and then two and then three? Well, you just find a block of two, the white key under the leftmost block, that's your C. And then it repeats, and that's how you know exactly where it's going. Okay, so what we're talking about here for this example is we're only looking at the white keys. And that's important to note because a piano is fixed. It's not like you take this and slide it around and all of a sudden it becomes different tones like on a guitar, how you can move things around. It's, no, this is, this is a fixed relationship. And they knew that when they created the language of music. And so your 12 tones, and then the 13th being the octave, like those never change. The relationship's always the same. And the way you need to know about that on the key, sorry, before we go just into the white keys, I was a little bit fast. Uh, talking about the quick relationship is that's a tone, you know, tone. This is a ha what's called a half step. So between the one, two, any two tones, that's a half step, half step, half step, half step, half step, because there's no black key, half step, half step, half step, blah, 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 same on. Uh, on a guitar, the reason why that's important is that's one fret, one fret. So on a guitar, one fret equals a half step. This, two half steps, equals a whole step. Basic math, imagine that. Don't run away. So, on the guitar, you guessed it, that's two frets. So the reason why that's important is, now if we want to consider just the white keys, well, basically when they founded music, you, you say C is kind of like you can say is the main root of all roots, if you will, because that's, again, the origins of music, Western music and the way it was created. So, if you were to go all the white keys, that creates an eight note scale. And scales can be any number of notes, but for the, in terms of talking about the main scales and the main modes, eight notes, that's what we're talking about. And one, eight notes one and eight, these are the octaves again. 
Well, you can look at the relationships between these. So you can go, well, that's a whole step. That's a whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. That's what defines a scale. That's what defines your major scale. Right there, done. But again, it's all the white keys. And the moment you go beyond that, you're playing the same notes. You're just playing all the white keys. You're just doing them an octave up and down. And that's, that's the difference. Well, that's, that's the important part. So let's get back to the guitar so that way I can actually show you how this relates on that. All right, here we are with the guitar. Yay, I chose this guitar because I figured the fret uh, markers make it a lot easier to see. Uh, it's, you know, the good old fashioned 90s guitars, these Ibanezes and how crazy they are, I love them. Now granted, to be fair, for the gear nuts out there, this is an 08, it's a reissue. Uh, this is not the original. I wish it was an original, but so be it. So anyways, <clears throat> let's talk about the scale. Let's talk about uh, the C major scale. Now, one quick thing, if you don't know where all the, the notes on the guitar is in terms of like the letters, like where a C is, I would highly recommend, there's some exercises you can look up that can do that. If, any, if maybe that's a future video I could put up if people are interested in that, or just a real quick idea of some exercises you can do on that. But it is, it is good knowledge to just know. Now, I'm not saying you have to link theory, but just to know at least where the notes are. So anyways, so let's put that C major scale to use where the C is on the guitar, so. Now if we were to keep going up. So that's, there you go, two octaves. Now, like on the piano though, how those notes extend out above and below, uh, you know, the same octave, it's the same thing on, on the guitar. So if you were to take all those notes, all the white notes, and extend them out in their native position, if you will, the C native position, you'd have what I call the grand pattern. And it would look something like this. Yo, really? Come on, man. Thank you. All right, so this is all the notes uh, in, this, in, the, in its native position, stretched all the way across the fretboard, right? So now you know where all the white notes are from in C native position when it's on the piano, so how that relates to the guitar. So once you know that, now you can play the major scale anywhere. You know, all it is is just starting and stopping on the right places, so. major scale all over the place. Now here's the kicker on where the power of this comes into play. So now that you know the grand pattern and you have to memorize it, that's the hardest part is that is definitely that is memorizing it. You now know where all the, the you know where the C's are in the native position. Well that's just the root of the major scale. That's all it is. So knowing where those points are, well now you can just take the whole pattern and slide it around where the hell you want. You want to play an E major? You just take the whole thing, slide it up. That's it. It's the same pattern. The same thing extends throughout the entire fretboard. It just loops over and over again because it's, again, you're just playing the same notes, just in different octaves, but you just know where those roots are. So you can slide it around. You want to play A major? exact same lick notes I was playing down here when I was in, when it was in C major, all I did is you just shifted the whole pattern down. That's it. Well, wow. So, all right, now this is where the cool factor comes in. So let's get back to the piano, and that way I can show you how this relates to the rest of the modes, where it's getting really cool. We're back. You haven't run away again, I hope. I still, I still hope you're here. Okay, so I just showed you the relationship of the, how the major scale works on the guitar, and in creating what I've called the grand pattern, the master pattern, if you will. Well, now we can take that and extrapolate it on the modes. So remember when I was showing you how C to C, all white keys on the piano, is the base, it's the foundation of Western music, if you will. Well, someone said, well, what if I just go D to D? What if I have a different start and a different end point on the piano? Well, there you go. It's a different relationship of notes, because instead of whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, it's now going to be whole step, half step, 
whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. So that's a different scale. But it's still all the white keys, all the same white keys. And that's what all the main modes are. It's all, it's starting at, from white, going from white key to white key, starting on the different, between the different notes. So there are seven modes. And yes, C to C, the major, the natural major scale in its native position is a mode. It's called Ionian mode. That's it. You know major scale? You know Ionian. It's not that hard. So next, so D to D. That's Dorian. It's also, it's a minor kind of scale. It's not natural minor, but it's minor. And then you have uh, E to E, which is Phrygian. It's a bit Middle Eastern sounding, has a bit of that vibe to it. It's not quite harmonic minor-ish, like, you know, the harmonic minor typewriter uh, Yngwie. It's nothing like that. But it's still, it's got more of that kind of flavor to it. Uh, F to F is Vi, I mean, uh, Lydian, excuse me. Uh, and then you've got G to G, that's Mixolydian. Uh, Lydian and Mixolydian are kind of, they're pretty similar. And they're a bit more exotic sounding, but in a more uplifting, major-ish kind of way. Uh, a to A, this is Aeolian, but this is also what is called the natural minor. So just like C to C is a major scale in its native position, A to A is the minor scale in its native position. All white keys again we're talking about here. And then you've got B to B, which is Locrian. I you notice it's like kind of like a rhyme and a rhythm to the rest of the words, and then you get Locrian in there. It's like, I don't know who came up with that or why. It, it, I think someone had a little bit too much of the, uh, you know, wine back in the day or something like that, or, I don't know, lost a bet. And then you're back to C to C, so you're back to Ionian, just a different one. Now here's where the relationship kicks in. You notice how every single one of those modes, we didn't go off the white keys. It's all the same white keys. So what that means, that grand pattern we, I talked about earlier, that covers the entire guitar, that's every mode. Because C to C, your major scale, uses all the exact same notes as D to D. All you're doing is, is you're starting and ending on different locations. So if you take that, if you take that scale and you just find where all the different start points are, like place the, map, place the grand pattern on the guitar fretboard in its native position, so where C is the major scale, and you place that out, and then, you know, anywhere you put a, you can take the C root, and if you slide that anywhere, that's how you can make, you know, it's like, oh, well, I want to play in the key of F, but I want it to be a major. Now I can actually take that, and then, boom, uh, it's now, I have the grand pattern with major all over the place. Well, same thing. If you just take, find out where the Dorian roots are, well, now you can shift those around, and you've got the scale in that key with that mode. And it's the exact same scale, exact same patterns. Once you've learned how to maneuver through in and out of those patterns and how you figured out how to move around and create your licks and your style with it, you can do it anywhere. You just have to start and stop on the right note. And that's the beauty of that method. And that's, it's so easy to remember all that once you figured it out. At least it was for me. But again, I'm kind of a pattern person. So that's my brain thinks in patterns. So if you're one of those kind of people where it's like, I think in a, I want to recognize a pattern and figure that out, so be it. And you're awesome. Okay. So now that you realize that all the white notes on the keyboard contain not only just the major scale, they contain all the modes. Well, that's the exact same thing with the grand pattern, how it works across the entire fretboard. So again, it just like you learned to slide the pattern around it because you know where the, the major root is, you just learn where the roots are for all the other patterns, and then you can slide it around the same way. Uh, so for example, if you wanted to play, you know, Phrygian in a native position, E to E, with the grand pattern. Well, if you want to play that in D, well, now you know where the root is, where the root on that whole pattern is for Phrygian. Well, now you just slide the whole scale down over to, well, that would be A, sorry. Slide it down to D, and now you've got D Phrygian. And you've got D Phrygian. Voila, it's the same thing. And then you can, and then just like I was showing how on the major scale, you can just keep sliding up and down the whole thing, you can do the same thing. Whatever. It's all the notes of the scale. It just depends where you start and stop. Look what we have here. We have a big purring kitty. He's a house kitty. He's called Stormy the Gray, or just Stormy Cat, or just Cat, or just Schnickens when he gets in the way and he, should, he does stuff he's not supposed to. Hey, kitty. Hey, kitty.
He's like, put me down. Okay, so now the, the hardest part in learning the gram pattern is memorizing it. Uh, the way I learned back in the day was I was originally taught the different modes and the pattern and the classic patterns that each mode has, but I never understood their relationship until much later that they all link together because they're all the same notes against all the white keys like I was just showing you already. Uh, so that's not a bad way to actually uh, learn the pattern is to start with something like, okay, let's just take, you know, the block of E to E, Phrygian. Voila, you've got that. Go something like D to D. Uh, usually try to do three notes per string, I skipped one there. Uh, but you get the point. And then you've got C to C, which is, hey, Major, you already learned that one. And then you want to try to do uh, B to B with Locrian, which is technically the same scale. You're just, again, you're starting and stopping, so you can go. And then there's minor, which is A to A. I fudged that one a bit, but you get the point. Uh, and then there would be G to G, uh, G to G, which is Mixolydian. That's the one I always screw up, is honestly, that's, I need to practice that myself, is showcasing that. I usually end up sliding up and down at that point because that transition is so difficult for me. I'm just like, uh, go that way or that way. But it's a great example of like practicing and learning that stuff. So you have to think about it because I'm used to playing in certain positions and you learn certain licks. It's also another way to break, good way to break some bad habits. So obviously I need to be a little more practicing myself. But anyways, so if you learn those vertical chunks and you slice them together, and then then you start learning how to put them together. And a great exercise uh, if. And a DVD I highly recommend is uh, Per Nilsson's uh, Scar Guitar. Fantastic DVD, lots of great information in there. You should definitely get it. Especially now if you understand this, it will make that DVD even like way more uh, interesting for you because you'll get a lot more, you can get even more out of it. Uh, but one exercise he has learning to go this way across the scales <clears throat> is to take whatever scale you're working on, in this case the grand pattern, and go two no do three notes per string, two strings at a time. And go up and or down and then skip up to the next two strings, up and down, skip up to the next two strings, go up and down, and do that over and over again. So you'd have, and, and again, I'm just playing the grand pattern in its native position. And then go up to the next two strings. And do that up and down keep going until you've learned the whole thing. And that's a great way to memorize it. And again, once you have it memorized, then all you have to realize is in its native position, say for example, you know D is Dorian, well, that's where the Dorian part, parts are. That from, that's where the Dorian roots are. And then same thing wherever the roots are on the other strings as well. And then you can just slide the whole thing up. I want to play A Dorian, so. You're, it's again, same notes, same pattern. And then once you've learned that interconnection, then you can start going all up and down and going crazy and hog wild and then learning to do all your licks and getting your own personality and stuff like that. And that's pretty much it. That's kind of the trick. Uh, so, yeah. All right, so now that I've showed you guys all that, uh, just to kind of demonstrate it, I'm just gonna play over a drone and be in Vi, I mean Lydian, excuse me. Uh, so enjoy and hope you like this video and uh, if you have any suggestions for something else that you might want that'd be informative uh, let me know otherwise I'll I have a couple of ideas for some other ones down the line
So to go over all the things I've just been talking about, hey, look, cat, mm, peety kitty. So to go over all the things I've just been talking, yes, cat. To go over things, yeah, I can't speak. Hey, thanks for clicking on my video. Appreciate it. Uh, if you've looked at my channel, you'll see this is my only my second video. But thank you for coming. Really? 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 <sighs> the joys of living in LA, people. Flying helicopters that love to ruin your videos all the time. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, circle. Yeah, you're doing great. Yeah, yeah, make sure to get the stripper that's running across the beach. Yeah, he's important. Go do that. Yeah. Now, before we actually get to the guitar, we get it. You mother... Really? 